Dear colleagues, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for uh, the very kind invitation. I'm really uh, privileged of uh, being here, even though virtually, uh, and have the opportunity to talk about uh, our uh, approach uh, of frozen elephant trunk without uh, secretary arrest. So when I think about uh, aortical surgery and uh, the progress that has been made in this um, subspecialty, well, I have no doubts that uh, anti-gray selective cerebral perfusion, cannulation of the axillary artery, the separated graft technique and classic and frozen elephant trunk have played a major uh, role. Uh, we are um, uh, deeply convinced that uh, anti-gray selective cerebral perfusion is the best method to protect the brain during aortic heart surgery. Uh, in 2003, uh, in a multi-institutional multi study uh, involving Professor Kazui uh, himself, we were able to demonstrate that uh, anti-gray selective cerebral perfusion allows a safe period of circuitry rest up to 90 minutes. And uh, it is possible to uh, avoid deep cooling, deep hypodermia, and use moderate hypodermia with this uh, uh, technique. Also, we are uh, convinced that uh, the safety graph technique is better than the island technique when uh, the aortic arch has to be uh, reconstructed, because uh, in a study we were able to demonstrate that this uh, separate graft techniques better than the M-block and astomosis technique uh, allows a, a significant reduction of uh, operative times, uh, CPV, cross clamp times, visceral and uh, left subclavian artery ischemia time. Uh, this uh, approach allows a more radical tissue uh, resection of the aura and allows for better uh, bleeding control. Um, compared to the uh, an island uh, technique. But uh, I think also we all agree that classic and frozen elephant track represent a major uh, advance in aortic heart surgery. These uh, techniques uh, allow uh, the treatment of complex patients, patients with extensive disease of the thoracic aorta, aneurysms, a section that go far beyond the left subclavian artery. We know that the classic elephant trunk allows uh, a simplified secondary distal uh, treatment of the aneurysmatic disease uh, that can be done uh, with uh, an, an endovascular approach as we're doing here or uh, with uh, with uh, um, uh, an open technique uh, this is a, a simplified uh, proximal anastomosis between the elephant trunk and the aortic graft uh, in a patient undergoing a secondary open thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm uh, repair. But I think uh, that um, today's, uh, today uh, the frozen elephant trunk uh, technique represent uh, the most common uh, technique used to replace uh, the aortic cuts. Uh, during the years, he has demonstrated uh, many advantages uh, in patients with uh, aneurysms. Uh, one for all, uh, the possibility to treat in one stage patients with aneurysms uh, going beyond the left subclavian artery uh, and confined to the proximal descending thoracic aorta. Uh, but I think that the most important advantage uh, comes uh, with, uh, in patients with uh, type A dissection. Uh, uh, this uh, operation, uh, when performing the acute phase, may uh, favorite uh, and induce obliteration uh, of the distal re-entry tears and induce false lumen thrombosis and aortic remodeling. Uh, it may simplify uh, total arch replacement, allowing uh, the distal anastomosis to be performed approximately, uh, zone zero, zone one, zone two, instead of zone three. Uh, uh, also, uh, it is very useful in patients that uh, are complicated by distal mal perfusion, optimizing distal true lumen perfusion and also the stand graft that is incorporated into the frozen elephant trunk prosthesis uh, may improve hemostasis at the distal anastomosis. But there is a one uh, case where uh, frozen elephant trunk is not my favorite uh, approach, and that is uh, in patient, in the younger patients that uh, we know are going to have a secondary open thoracoabdominal uh, aortic uh, repair. And patient like this one, uh, pose uh, three major challenges uh, during uh, uh, the open thoracic abdominal repair. And this is uh, the aortic proximal clamping when the aneurysm are very large. To put a clamp from outside can be very difficult. 
also a, a very important crucial moment is uh, the, uh, the moment that you have to retrieve the elephant track classic of frozen especially in patients with chronic dissection and uh, another uh, major challenge is represented by the anastomosis uh, if a frozen elephant trunk is done at stage one between the graft and the stem graft that can be very annoying and not so uh, easy so uh, for these patients we have developed a new intervention that we call double layer frozen elephant trunk with balloon and their clamping so basically what we're doing is uh, constructing uh, 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 um, a frozen elephant trunk by ourselves. We at stage one we do perform a classic elephant trunk, and inside the classic elephant trunk, in an articulate fashion, doing secretory resting, we deploy a stand graft. Uh, 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 and the stand graft is shorter than the classic elephant trunk, and that will allow us to have uh, at the distal end of the uh, of the elephant trunk a free dacron instead of a, a, a instead of a stand graft and this is a this is the case uh, uh, the, the 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 chest has been opened the aorta has been isolated we have a guide wire into the true lumen we cannulate in the nominate artery for uh, extracorporeal uh, circulation institution we always do this with an eight millimeters uh, interposition graft So this is connected to the arterial line. So uh, we're going to um, make the anastomosis in zone two. So we uh, ligate uh, the subclavian artery, but we immediately reperfuse it uh, with an interposition graft of eight or 10 millimeters. We start at the flow of 300 cc here. So we put the clamp on the aorta, we give cardioplegia, we arrest the heart, while giving cardioplegia, we um, divide and uh, reperfuse the left common carotid artery. We, can, we clamp the innominate artery. We open the aorta. Here you see a, a very large entry tear. So now, we resect completely the aortic arch and we construct a very long elephant trunk. Classic, as you can see. So the trunk goes into the aorta, the distal anastomosis is, uh, is uh, uh, performed. So over the guide wire, we advance a, a balloon catheter we inflate the balloon catheter and gently we pull it back. And by doing this, we basically avoid the foldings of the classic elephant trunk. We sure that the classic elephant trunk is nicely extended. And then in an integrated fashion, we deploy uh, a stand graft that is shorter than uh, the classic elephant trunk itself. So by doing that, and, and we complete the operation as usual. So the proximal anastomosis, uh, after this, we reperfuse the heart uh, while cooling the, with the beating heart, we complete the reconstruction. And now we are at stage two, the thoracic abdominal phase. And here, you see the exposition, the retroperitoneal exposition of the uh, aorta. We're working with our vascular surgeon here. This is the thoracic abdominal aneurysm. And uh, to overcome the challenges that I mentioned before, Here is what we do. At the moment, we are starting with the left heart uh, bypass. So we puncture the aneurysm and we catheterize the true lumen. Actually, we were in the false lumen at the beginning, but we end up to get into the true lumen. As you see, the guide wire is advancing nicely up to the uh, ascending aorta. So over the guide wire, we advance a balloon catheter. We inflate the balloon catheter. We put a clamp on the mid-descending thoracic aorta. And uh, so we can open the aorta. You see, this is a very easy to see the, 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 the elephant trunk. We remove the balloon, we put a clamp, and now we can perform a very nice and easy 
graft to graft uh, anastomosis for a daughter to, for this thoracic abdominal aortic uh, operation. So by constructing the double layer frozen elephant trunk and by using uh, uh, endoclamp, uh, endoclamp, we 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 could facilitate this. Uh, uh, that uh, certainly remi remains a very difficult uh, operation. So, thanks to these important um, techniques, uh, uh, ortical surgery can be performed today with uh, quite good results. But uh, uh, there is no doubt that uh, uh, ortical surgery still present very important limitation. And uh, I have no doubt that uh, the use of secretory rest and the use of hypodermia represent the main limitations of this uh, uh, intervention. Uh, sometimes I think, so, I think that uh, as a cardiac surgeon, we forget or we ignore the fact that we know that uh, visceral ischemia is, uh, is a strong risk factor for mortality and morbidity during aortic arch uh, surgery. Uh, this is not an opinion. This is a fact. And uh, I think that as a surgeon, we should do our best to improve our results. And there is no doubt that being able to avoid visceral ischemia uh, may uh, improve our results. Also, I'd like to um, uh, make a, to, to mention uh, uh, the, the, the spinal cord injury. Even though it's clear to us how we can minimize a spinal cord injury during frozen elephant trunk, and that can be done by perfusing the left subclavian artery, by using frozen elephant trunk that are not too long, liquid drainage in the elective patients, and maintain valid hemodynamics after reperfusion. Spinal cord injury remain a concern during and after frozen elephant trunk intervention. In this review and meta-analysis study, spinal cord injury is reported as high as 5%. Uh, also, you see other detrimental complications like renal failure, 11%, reoperation for bleeding, 8%, respiratory complications that are in the neighborhood of 15 to 20%. Uh, and also, when we look at this very important study, this is the Evita uh, registry, the data from the Evita registry, we see that results are not really improving over the time. Uh, this uh, study um, look at uh, trends, at uh, how results have changed during the study period. So we have two periods, initial first period, second period, and you see that basically stroke has decreased during the study period, but spinal cord injury remains the same. So uh, respiratory insufficiency remains the same. Results are not that very much uh, improved. Clear, secretory rest and hypodermia are important limitations. So having recognized this important limitation in our hospital, and this is our hospital in, uh, in, uh, in Ancona, based on a very fruitful uh, collaboration and friendship uh, with uh, our vascular surgeon, and also based on uh, the fact that in our institution uh, already three years ago, uh, in cardiac surgery, we were able to activate a, um, a very proficient transcatheter program for patients having aortic and mitral valve diseases. So this means that we are performing TAVI mitral clip tendine operations by ourselves in cardiac surgery without the aid of the cardiologist. We uh, have uh, uh, developed uh, an operation that uh, allow us to perform a frozen elephant trunk uh, repair without uh, secretary rest. So having an uninterrupted distal perfusion uh, and uh, avoiding uh, hypodermia. So we do perform this operation normothermic. And these are the main procedural steps. We first cannulate the nominate and the femoral artery for uh, arterial uh, CPB inflow. We uh, deploy with the standard retrograde uh, technique, uh, off pump, uh, a stand graft uh, at the level of the descending thoracic aorta and distal aortic arch uh, at different uh, landing zones, depending on the patient's uh, anatomy. After we put the stand graft, we start the pump, we start the pump, 
and uh, using uh, sorry using uh, a balloon endoclamping uh, from the femoral artery we can have uh, an uninterrupted perfusion of the brain and of the lower body by doing that we can open the aura uh, with a perfectly bloodless operative field we can perform a graft to stand graft and anastomosis and complete the reconstruction as usual all these can be done without circuitry rest and remaining normothermic. This was our patient number one, 81 years old male, uh, creatinine 1.4 um, milligram per deciliter and a, a six centimeter aortic arch aneurysm. We are in the OR here, full stenotomy, uh, extensive exposition of the arch vessels, cannulation of the innominate artery and uh, femoral artery. We are off pump now. We put in clips to um, to uh, mark our uh, landing zone. We advance with a guide wire up to the ascending aorta and off pump we deploy our stand graft. The stand graft is deployed. We intentionally covering the left subclavian artery The system is retrieved and over the guide wire, a balloon catheter is advanced. Now we simulate the clamping. We de decide where to put our balloon, how much, we need, how much volume we need to be occlusive. And we put a marker on the, on the, on the uh, catheter. The C arm is uh, going away. We start the pump. We revascularize the left subclavian artery, starting at 300 cc. And now you see, we clamp the aorta, we protect the heart, while giving cardioplegia, we um, uh, cannulate the left common carotid artery. We clamp the nominate artery. We inflate the balloon. And having the upper and lower, lower body fully perfused, we can open the, the aorta and we find a perfect bloodless opera field, we resect the ascending aorta, the aortic catch up to the uh, stand graft that we just deployed. You see the balloon, and uh, with the continuous perfusion of the lower body, we do perform our distal anastomosis. After that, we can deflate the balloon and continue our operation. That means proximal anastomosis, reperfusion of the heart, and over the beating heart, reconstruction with the separated graft technique of the arch vessels. These are the anatomy that you can treat with this uh, kind of operation. Sacral aneurysm of the mid-distal arch, aneurysm of the ascending aorta, arch and proximal descending aorta, aneurysm of the distal arch and proximal descending aorta, thoracic aorta. Of course, if you want to use this technique, you need sealing of your stent graft at the distal uh, end. And uh, this is uh, another very nice indication, um, type 1a, uh, proximal endolic after fever. Normally, a patient like this one uh, are treated using a uh, secretary rest. The arch graft is sutured during a period of secretary rest to the stent graft and to the uh, aorta. By doing so, uh, the leak is uh, closed. Actually, you don't need to use a secretary rest anymore if you use a, a catheter balloon that may endoclamp your, your stent graft. Uh, we started actually with uh, with this uh, kind of uh, uh, patients with this kind of uh, disease, and after that we thought, well, we can construct our own frozen elephant trunk if we first deploy the stand graft, and then using a balloon catheter to clamp the stand graft, we can uh, complete the arch uh, reconstruction. This is another uh, indication type uh, A acute artery dissection. We have treated two patients without secretary rest, and so far, to my best knowledge, uh, these are the first case. Uh, of frozen elephant trunk uh, in a patient with type A dissection that has been performed without a second of circuitry rest. And uh, uh, in these uh, patients, we uh, added 
um, something uh, uh, new as well, uh, and in particular a 24 French sheet uh, that uh, was used to uh, advance uh, uh, and deploy the stand graph into the, the sandy Jurassic era to advance uh, uh, and inflate the balloon. But also the, this uh, sheet was used as a perfusion uh, cannula, so with the tip of the sheet inside uh, the stand graft and with the balloon occluding the stand graft, we could obtain uh, a, a continuous anti-grade uh, perfusion of the dissected torque abdominal aura. This was uh, our first patient with type A dissection. You see here a wide entry tear at the level of the uh, articulate. This patient was a, a young man uh, in his 50s. He came to us uh, with a very stable and good hemodynamic condition that was during the day. So we were ready to perform this challenging um, operation. And, uh, and uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, this is the CD scan again. You see the same patient. We're going down. We see the visceral vessels arising from from the true lumen. One renal artery. The left one was uh, dissected as well, involved by the dissection. Okay, so we are in the OR here. We open in the pericardium. You see the badly dissected aorta. We, as usual, uh, we 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 uh, very um, extensively isolated the nominated vein and the uh, arch uh, vessel. We were on the pump. We wanted to land with our stem graft um, on um, zone one. So we are catheterizing uh, the, the the true lumen here. We are on the pump, we are cooling a little bit to 28 degrees. Uh, for this case, we um, dividing and uh, reperfusing uh, the left subclavian artery here with an eight millimeter grafts. As usual, we start with 300 cc on this side. We want uh, similar pressures on the right and left radial arteries. This is going to be our landing zone that we mark with the, some um, MO clips. So we're going to cover the, uh, intentionally cover the left common carotid artery. So that's why we divide it. Uh, we perfuse it with a, a cannula. So we're ready for the endovascular part of this hybrid uh, approach. This is the 24 sheet that is advanced through the femoral artery over the guide wire. The stand graph is advanced up to our uh, well-defined proximal landing zone. The, 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 the metronic valley is uh, um, deployed intentionally uh, covering uh, the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery that are perfused with separate pumps. The system is retrieved. The, the, the sheet is uh, advanced cranially in order to have the tip of it uh, inside the stem graft. So the balloon catheter is advanced, the, 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 the arterial line is advanced, so we're ready for clamping the stem graft. So the aorta is clamped, the arterial line is opened so that we can have an anti-grade perfusion of the dissected torus of the dominant aorta by the sheet itself. So you see the nominate artery, which is cannulated as well. We clamp on it, so we have a, a cranially a lower uh, upper body perfusion, lower body perfusion. We can open the aorta, we can resect the ascending aorta, the arch, and up to the um, proximal landing zone. One, we see our aorta, we see our stem graft that we just deployed. We can perform the distal anastomosis. We like to restart perfusion from the graft, so very quickly we connect the arterial line that was uh, on the femoral artery on the side branch of the graft we put a clamp on the graft and we start with under perfusion so we remove everything here the, the balloon catheter and also the sheet uh, and uh, and uh, we're ready to uh, complete our repair so we prepare the proximal aortic stump with the sandwich technique using a double type of felt and uh, and uh, under the beating out as we always do we complete the, re the revascularization of the arch vessel, and this is uh, the final uh, the final result. 
frozen elephant trunk in Taipei Equity dissection without circuitry arrest, uninterrupted perfusion along the entire operation. And uh, the patient did extremely well. It uh, was extubated shortly after bleeding was absolutely uh, limited uh, the, uh, 24 28 hours uh, icu length of stain renal uh, function was uh, perfect and you see uh, this is a uh, uh, this is uh, something that we always get, always observe in these uh, uh, patients uh, the mean lactate value was 1.75 this is normal the highest value of lactate was the preoperative one so far, we have done uh, 15 uh, cases, 13 aneurysm, two type A dissection, and the results were um, satisfactory. We uh, basically had no complication. We only had one death. Uh, it was a, a 75 years old lady. She was obese. She had severe COPD. She was on medication for her lung disease. Um, this patient was not fit for uh, an endovascular repair and uh, so we decided to operate this patient with this uh, uh, with our approach but uh, uh, she was extubated uh, 24 hours later but uh, uh, she was uh, she had uh, lung uh, respiratory insufficiency two or three days afterwards she was reintubated and that was the beginning of the end and uh, this is the only patient we had some uh, complication all other patients were absolutely uh, were discharged uh, uneventfully. And this is uh, the mean peak lactate value of these 15 patients, 1.1 millimole liter. This is a normal value. So we have an uh, optimal uh, perfusion of our uh, patient. So uh, the conclusion, uh, the fact that we are good and very confident with deep hypodermic secretary arrest as aortic surgery does not make deep hypodermia and secretary arrest good for our patient. This is a uh, detrimental. This is a, a strong limitation of this surgery. And uh, when I see the progress that has been made in, in, in other uh, cardiovascular uh, subspecialties, and I'm thinking about TIVOR, I'm thinking about uh, TAVOR, uh, transcatheter deployment, hybrid intervention that are currently performed, well, I cannot imagine that we not we cannot imagine uh, how to uh, make progress in this uh, aortic surgery by avoiding uh, deep hypodermia secretary. This is a uh, we should make very strong efforts in this direction. And it was I was honored to have the opportunity to uh, share with you our current line of uh, research. And uh, the second message that comes out of this uh, work, uh, this is something that we're really convinced on, is that uh, uh, catheter-based techniques may really add value to our open surgical uh, intervention and may help us making progress in our specialty. And I think this operation is uh, um, a good example for this uh, uh, notion. Again, thank you very much for the hospitality. Uh, it was honored to be here. Uh, thank you very much.